Hey guys, this is Gamer Cow, and this is definitely not properly set because, yeah, this thing is being weird. There we go, properly set now, so screw you, game. Also, hi, mouse. Hey, anyway, this is the Pokemon Trading Card Game, the original one that came out in, as you see, 1998. It's pretty damn old by now, but it's still freaking awesome. Unfortunately, you can't choose to be anything but this dude over here, and you can't even choose the actual like color or even lowercase for your name, so yeah. The problem with this, really, is that it's going to be really freaking slow to start, because unfortunately you can't change the text speed for quite a long time. So this whole episode, I think it's probably going to take about 15-16 minutes or so to get it done until you can change the speed of everything. But basically, the idea is that there are some legendary cards which we want to inherit. This is strictly Generation 1, so the legendary cards would be of the legendary Pokemon from Gen 1. And... Yeah, so um, play for a while. Yeah, sure, whatever. And this game assumes that you both have an instruction book and that you have never played before. Because you have to ask about basics and stuff. We don't need to ask about any of that crap because I'm going to show it all when we actually play the game. So to be completely honest, there is no need for me to do that. Unfortunately, yeah, the, there's no way of skipping this. And this actually gives the game a very terrible reputation in, the, in, the, in a way. Because it's like first impression is completely horrid. Since this is it, this is um, you have to do the guided tutorial tour sort of thing. However, at least the music is cool. Anyway, to start off every game, you draw seven cards. You usually shuffle your deck, but you don't in this one. And you have to get a basic Pokemon in your hand. If you don't get a basic Pokemon, the opponent gets to see your hand and then you shuffle it back into the deck and redraw. Unlike the main card game where originally you actually had to... You had to... Um, uh, you, you still did a reshuffle stuff, but the opponent was able to draw a couple of cards. It was called a, you know, the mulligan thing that... In the real game now, as far as I know, you only have to you only get to draw up to one more card. But um, yeah, when you originally played this game in this generation, you could actually draw two cards. But that's not the point. Uh, placing prizes once basic Pokemon are down, you know both players have got that. You place prize cards down, which are awarded for knockouts. When you KO the opposition's Pokemon, you take one of your prize cards. You take all your prize cards, you win. That's the basic idea. That's not the only win condition, but that is the main one. Unfortunately, Mason over here is still, you know, the Professor Duder is going to make us play exactly as he wants, and he's going to take 10 million and a years to kind of tell us exactly how to play, even though we already know this. There is no way of skipping this, which is really stupid. So, anyway, what he was telling us to do, if you weren't actually paying attention, and I don't blame you if you weren't, was to put the water energy onto Godin. Energy is needed to attack in this game. It's not quite like Yu-Gi-Oh, where, you know, you just place the monster down and it, attack it can attack regardless, unless it has its own conditions. In this game, you have to actually have the um, the right energy to attack. And as you can see, if we check the in-game area, you can see what Goldeen stats are like here. We've got HP, every circle is 10 hit points, it's got its own type, it's got no retreat cost actually, because it's Goldeen, Goldeen doesn't have that. It's got a weakness to lightning Pokemon, so weakness, they take double damage. And it doesn't have a resistance. We'll see resistance in a little bit, but basically if you have a resistance to a type, it lowers the damage that type does by 30. And then you see Horn Attack, it's a basic 10 damage attack and it takes one water energy to use. Goldeen's not really that great, but it's a decent low cost Pokemon, I guess. Uh, you can see 
exactly what you, you know, you can go back into this by just pressing select, and my mouse is back on the screen, that is just kind of annoying, but whatever, you can see that, you can see their Pokemon, you can see what's in the discard pile, you know, cards in hand, you can check that, uh, you know, you see what's in the deck. You can also see the bench, the bench is your reserve Pokemon, if you, if your active loses all of its HP and gets knocked out, you have to replace it with a bench. And if you can't actually do that, then you get um, losing match status. Yeah, you lose if you can't replace your active. So we're going to go, of course, with the horn attack. It's a nice little attack right there. And we did some damage, so you see the circle is filled in. It's all pretty standard, I guess, but yeah, Machop has a low kick attack for one fighting energy, it does 20 damage. It's kind of a lot of damage to take, I don't really like taking that, but you know, that's just how it goes. Now, the biggest thing here, you, it's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! had tribute monsters, where you sacrifice your low-level monsters to play high-level ones. This game, it's kind of a little bit different in that you evolve the Pokémon by attaching the higher stage evolution to it. Go away, mouse! I think it's because my uh, optical USB mouse is on my bed and it's just spazzing out a little bit, but oh well. You don't have to attach a psychic energy, but we'll see. Yeah, Sea King's Waterfall takes one water energy and one of any energy card. That's the colorless one. I don't actually agree with that option in this particular match, but whatever, it's what you have to do. A uh, quick thing with the hand, of course you can see the um, stats of any one card by going check, or you can press plus to check it. Not press plus, you press start. Start is plus on the Wii controller however, so yeah. That's got nothing to do with anything. Um, you can see Seeking has a retreat cost, so if you want to switch your active Pokemon you have to pay energy, and the energy you pay is the retreat cost. So if I wanted to retreat Seeking, it would cost me one of any energy. Like that. I obviously won't because that breaks what he wants me to do, and so that would mean we'd have to restart the freaking turn. Uh, you can use Select, as I've done there, in order to re you know, basically reorder the hand. You can only order it in the way the game wants you to, though. So it puts all the energy first, sorts them by type. It puts Pokémon straight after that, and I think it does Basics and then Evolutions. And then it puts Trainers right down the bottom. So if you've got a large hand from drawing, you know, say, Professor Oak cards and stuff, you can then use that to basically reorganize it and work from there. Now, as you can see, Seeking actually retained Horn Attack from Gordine. Most of the time evolutions don't have the same attacks as their basics, but this one does. However, it also has Waterfall, which does 30 damage for 2 energy, and it's a pretty solid attack actually. The thing is, that's the best that Seeking can do, so it's a good early game card, but not as a late game. Anyway, we see Rattata there, and Rattata is going to come out later, but not just now. And we took another 20 damage. That kind of hurt, dude. Seriously. So, what have we got to do here? Yep, Sea King has, of course, as many energy as it needs. It's a cheap attacker, so that's kind of nice. But, we need to get Bench Pokemon on the go, and we are going to, therefore, you know, get that set up. Basically, if you have your main attacker set up, obviously the next thing to do is to put some um, energy on the bench, because if you get knocked out or if you need to switch or something, you have to have something in reserve to attack with. So, yeah. Now, as I explained earlier, once you KO a Pokémon, you get a prize card, and that is all fine and dandy. We're going to see that pretty soon. If you choose Waterfall here, it will make you redo the turn. It's so freaking stupid. You know, it's like, okay, I get it. He has 10 HP left, KO him with a 10 HP attack just to stick the middle finger up. But why would you honestly need to do that? I don't know. I mean, sometimes I could see it in maybe one case ever, but it's just not really needed at all. Anyway, Rattata, it's actually not terrible as a starter, but it doesn't really have any HP to speak of. Rattake, on the other hand, has a little bit more, and that kind of hurts. 
So yeah, it also has a 20 hit and 20 damage attack. Unfortunately, it takes one of any energy, which is a bit better. The thing is, uh, Eradicate's not that great in general, I don't think. But yeah, no Pokemon on the bench, you lose the game, so put extra Pokemon down. And this is why I didn't agree with the Psychic Energy choice earlier, because Drowsy takes two Psychic Energy to do its second attack. So... Yeah, when you had enough Water Energy in the first place, it's kinda dumb. But yeah, we can see Drowsy, we're probably going to see that a fair bit during the game, depends on what it happens. But yeah, Confuse Ray, Confusion will explain status as it goes along, because that's not going to play a role in this particular training match. Similarly, we'll explain trainers and stuff a bit more later. There's going to be one that comes in here, but yeah, it's not that necessary at the moment. Basically, trainers are your sort of spell cards if you've ever played Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's pretty much it. Except it's only ever normal spells, because there wasn't such a thing as um, tools or stadiums and stuff like that in this, in this day and age, basically. So yeah, I see King die, that's not very great. This is why we charged up Staryu, however, because Staryu can now come in and attack instead. See, Ratsuke actually has a Psychic Resistance, so there's no point putting Drowsy in, because Drowsy can't do damage to it. Yeah, press select to do data, we know that, we know that. I've already explained that, you can basically do this. If you press select, you can see your hand, you can see, you know, the in-play areas. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can also press start to see the status again, so... Yeah, it's it's all nice and easy. We probably won't see too much of that, but yeah. Saw you evolves to Starmie. No shit, Sherlock. Yay, okay, so yep, get ready to evolve, so basically attach more energy to it, because yeah. And yeah, that's basically it. Attach energy and attack. That is how a standard turn goes, I suppose. It basically is attach energy play trainers if you've got them, and go from there. But his Raticate is very close to dying, but oh, that's Machop, that's not going to be good because he can retreat. He's paid in energy, we'll see that next turn, but he has gotten away and I can't kill him from the bench, because you're only allowed to attack the active Pokemon, unless there are exceptional circumstances. There's a couple of um, couple of cards that can attack the bench, but we don't see them very often, so yeah. Anyway, this introduces us to trainers, and yeah, we're going to see basically how trainers work, you know, we just play them and they do a thing. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? But yeah, water energy and a potion, a potion will heal 20 damage from Staryu. So it is now at full health again, and we can attack. Now I know in the modern game now, Potion actually heals 30 HP, but yeah, this was the originals man, and that's what Potions heal back in the first game, so that's what it heals now as well. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, Starmie, Starmie is not out yet, but it will be now. Yeah, spoilers, we draw Starmie. <laughs> yeah, we finally drawn the Starmie card, so let's place it down and evolve. Yes, we can use Star Freeze, so we'll attack with that. I am not a huge fan of Starmie. It's a bit of a shame, because Staryu itself is fantastic. You see, it's a 20 damage attacker for a single energy. It's really good. But Starmie is just completely terrible. I guess it's kind of okay if you've got double colorless, but even then, 20 damage is the most it can do? Okay, it's got a paralysis chance, but for free energy, that's awful. Oh well, what can you do? It can heal itself if you discard water energy, I guess. But then you've got to consider, do you have time to do that? And in most games, not really. So yeah, we've got Star Freeze, if we flip heads on this, and it's rigged so that we do flip heads, I, you, you cannot flip tails on any of the coins in this. So yeah. But we have 20 damage more on that thing, only 10 HP left, it's paralyzed, which means it can't retreat, and since he can't evolve, that is kind of game over. 
paralysis goes away at the end of each turn, but basically the paralyzed Pokemon is not allowed to attack or retreat. So it kind of sucks. Yep, finished the battle with Star Freeze, and we take out the last Pokemon that we need. Even see, here's the thing, even though he has a Raticate on the bench, we have knocked out two Pokemon, there were two prizes, therefore we win, basically. It doesn't matter that he still has a reserve Pokemon. Usually, although, well, not usually in this game, but usually in the actual game, you play with six prizes, which is meant to denote a full team of six Pokemon. So clearly, if you've taken all six prizes, then you would have beaten six of the opponent's Pokémon. So it's kind of like your prize count is basically how many reserve Pokémon you have. So there, that is how it's played. Daddy da game, try and knock out the opponent's Pokémon. We know that, basically. There are a couple of other ways that you can do stuff, but that's the main one, and that's the obvious one to do. Um, the other major one is to deck the opponent out, but there isn't really anything that you can do that with in this game. The best that you can do, the only card that can discard cards from the opponent's deck is uh, Moltres, I think. And even that, it takes energy discard, basically, to do it, so it's not viable at all. Anyway, here's adding cards to ours, and what do we want? Well, we've got the starters, basically. What do we want? Fire, water, grass. Ah, choices, choices, choices. Hmm. You know what? If I can get enough for it, you guys decide. So, I am going to be a douche, and I'm going to leave the video there. So, this has been Gamakao playing a Pokemon trading card game. Unfortunately, it's a slow start, but what can you really do? And join me next time when we decide what deck we are going to take, I guess, and all will be well with the world. So, yeah, if you could, in the comments, if you care enough to leave what deck type you would want, and we'll run with that, I'll see how the game goes from there. So yeah, see you guys next time.